Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's our host here, and today we're going to be talking about computational creativity and the role that artificial intelligence is going to play in the creative future. So sit back, relax, and you know the vibes. Run that intro. So first of all, what is creativity? And I think this is one of the most difficult concepts to define because creativity in its essence is the lack of definition. It's the freedom of expression, the embracement of vulnerability and the confrontation of fear. Mm. I did. So then defining it is contradictory because you're then limiting it to your understanding. Albert Einstein said creativity is intelligence having fun. So are computers capable of creativity? Are they capable of having fun? Now to answer that question, let's look at the implementation of artificial intelligence in areas that are usually dominated by creative people. So I came across this model called Deep Days and basically what it does is that it takes any text or phrase you type into it and creates art from that. And here are some examples of the art it created. For example, here the phrase was meditative peace in a sunlit forest. And this one is a time traveler in the crowd. And lastly, a psychedelic experience on LSD. Personally, I found that mind blowing, but I also wanted to see how it worked. So I put in a phrase of my own, rice on fire. And unlike all the other phrases, I put this particular phrase because I wanted to limit the amount of information it had. Like in the other ones where it was a psychedelic experience, there was a lot of room for the model to explore. But with rice on fire, there's not much you can do. You have rice and you have fire. So I wanted to see what it's come up with. And it actually came up with this. And this is already crazy. But that's not all. Ha, <sighs> fairly weary. You want to see crazy. Oh. So there was a new mode that was added to this model that allows it to take not only short phrases, but also short stories and poems. So it was given the poem Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. And this, this is what it came up with. Another implementation of computational creativity is in the movie industry. In 2016, Fox reached out to IBM to help them create a trailer for one of their movies called Morgan. Morgan was meant to be this human hybrid sci-fi horror kind of movie, but the catch was that IBM was to create this trailer using IBM's artificial intelligence, Watson. So basically, Watson was fed hundreds of horror movie trailers, and from that, he was able to learn, and he then watched the whole Morgan movie, analyzed it, and then looked for parts of the movie that had the highest emotions. It cut those pieces out and he gave it to the editors and said, these would be the best parts for the trailer. Now that's crazy. So the editors put it together and I'm telling you the trailer for that movie was like, it's insane. I'll put the link in the description so you can watch it after this video. But the movie wasn't that good. But the trailer that Watson was able to create, it blew my mind. So now back to the question, are computers actually capable of creativity? And in my opinion, I'll say not really, or at least not yet. Because most of these models still rely on deep learning and that is where you give the computer the information and then it learns how to predict based on the information you give it. And if creativity is thinking outside the box, then that flaws the logic because you're basically feeding the computer the box or the information or the data and that then restricts the computer's creativity, if that makes sense. John Smith, the multimedia and vision manager at IBM Research said, it's easy for an AI to come up with something new randomly but it's very difficult for an AI to come up with something new that's unexpected and that would be useful. And to me, the word unexpected is what stands out there because when you feed a model a particular type of data, you kind of expect the output to be related to that data somehow. But until computers can come up with something that is totally unrelated, new and useful and unexpected, I think that's when we can say, you know what, this computer is creative or this form of intelligence is creative. So in conclusion, I think we first need to understand the methodology behind our own human creativity before we then try to implement it on computers. And I think the goal should not be to create a form of intelligence that would be able to make stuff on its own, but rather to create an intelligence that would augment our own creativity. Basically creating a creative assistant. But yeah, we've come to the end of the video. I'd really love to hear your thoughts and takes on this. And yeah, please don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, but you know the vibe. Stay light and stay G. Safe.